Yesterday, I said that we build from the abyss, from the destroyed places, and we build with hope. This year felt that the rug had been pulled from under us. And we, the Jewish people, are trying to get our equilibrium back while still in the midst of a trauma. A trauma that is not only ours, but is also our enemies. All people are experiencing trauma right now. But for us, some of us struggled with upholding or rebalancing our commitments to our universal values while rightfully feeling more responsible for our particular people. The balance of universalism and particularism changed a bit this year. Some of us wondered where our allies had gone. I was shocked when people and institutions didn't believe that rapes and horrors of the seventh had happened. I wasn't shocked that they happened. I was shocked that people in the international community didn't believe they happened. Last year taught us so much about the need for strong, rich, deep, and layered Jewish identity. Last year taught us so much about the need for deep, diverse, and layered Jewish community. Last year clarified for me what we can aspire to do and be as Jews and as a Jewish community. This moment in history teaches us to lean in, to care more deeply about the world while being more passionate about our Jewish people. And I don't need to tell you, your identity is strong because you are here on the second day. So come lean in with me as we think about ways of being Jewish during a time of increased anti-Semitism and a time when Israel is in peril. This past summer, while in Jerusalem, I had moments of particularly deep joy and connectedness, even during a time that was ostensibly miserable. On July 14th, Rachel and John Goldberg Poland, Hirsch's parents, and other hostage families organized a week of chesed, a week of loving kindness, to bring more good energy into the world. Think about that for a second. They could have stayed royal with sadness and pain. Surely they were. But instead, they turned to mitzvot. They invited us to engage more deeply in Jewish life. Rachel and other hostage families said, quote, what if we try to infuse more light into this very dark chapter we're experiencing? What if we try to flood the world with more goodness when right now we're experiencing the world in such a fractured way? is amazing and countercultural and goes against human nature. When things get bad, bombard the world with good. Counteract the negative with our own positive. Rachel was quoted as saying, the week of goodness is a way to rally people around the world to increase the amount of good deeds and Torah in every corner of the globe. Rachel explained that in Jewish thinking, the merit of performing mitzvot commandments helps improve the world for all of us. 
She said, we feel that the Torah and mitzvot are really our blueprint for life. So I say during this extremely painful, challenging, angst-ridden time, she continued, we have been still very thankful that we have Torah as the anchor and core grounding and source of our life. I know it seems strange. At such a dark time, they turn to mitzvah and to Torah. Mitzvah means commandment. Rabbi Brad Artson, rector of the Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies and our future scholar in residence in March, writes that mitzvot are our perception of God's will mediated through human understanding. Dr. Arnold Eisen, former JTS chancellor, suggests that mitzvah also means Jewish actions. Living a life of mitzvot is not only about observing any one particular law or ritual. It is seeing one's existence as shaped by Jewish values, Jewish culture, and actions each day. It is a worldview. It is about feeling connected to our values, the performance of positive Jewish actions each day. When I use the word mitzvah, I mean infusing our lives with commandments and with culture, art, literature, holidays, with creative, modern ways of expressing our Judaism. I mean seeing our lives as anchored by a set of responsibilities to each other, to our past, to our future, and to the Holy One. So on a Sunday night this past summer, I skipped class at Hartman, as did everyone, and joined thousands of people packed into Jerusalem's first station, an outdoor venue. More were online for communal singing in honor of the hostages. John led us first in reciting psalms, and then we sang for two hours straight. Old and young sang new and old songs. Harmonies were created to cradle the families and each other in love. It was devastating and uplifting at the very same time. And for a moment, there was goodness. The mitzvah, the Jewish actions, were reciting psalms, singing as if it were prayer and showing up. These mitzvot brought light into a dark time. Each day of that week heightened a different mitzvah. Monday, volunteers around the world read and studied every single chapter of the Bible. They learned Torah for its own sake. Tuesday and Wednesday were dedicated to doing mitzvot that are acts of loving kindness. Forests were cleaned. People worked at food banks, visited the elderly, and volunteered all over the world. They turned pieces of their sackcloth into dancing, if only for a brief moment. Thursday was holiday, day. With 120 hostages remaining at that time, 120 people did the mitzvah of making and taking challah. At night, they dedicated a newly commissioned Torah at their traditional egalitarian shul. They transformed bad energy into mitzvah, Jewish action and goodness. It was remarkable. Secular and religious Jews and non-Jews joyfully did mitzvot all over the world. They leaned into their Judaism. A month ago, when six hostages were murdered, John and Rachel's community immediately started online signups to learn Torah in their memory. More impressive is that after Shiva, Rachel wrote a note to her shul that was shared widely. She graciously thanked all for the 11 months of care and said that we shared in her grief. 
she then leaned right back into Jewish tradition and said, friends, keep davening, keep praying for others and for her family. She leaned into the mitzvah of prayer. And at a time when things were precarious, her act reminded me to cherish each mitzvah, each action that connects me to God, to our people, to our past, to our future, to each one of you. Each mitzvah that we're privileged to do each day. Remember back last Rosh Hashanah when we thought the Jewish world was fractured? from politics in Israel and competing political ideas in the world. Then a day in October changed things for Jews worldwide. For some, it brought what you knew to be true into question. For some, the questions about your Jewish identity were more subtle. But most of us felt some change. In Israel and here, people were rattled, and many of us still are. But know that more people came to shul, and odd things started to happen. More people started to wear Jewish jewelry, chais, and Jewish stars. Here in the United States, even marginally or non-affiliated friends began to seek out ways to connect. Here's something interesting. More people sought me out and other rabbis and asked to join our people. What an incredible blessing they are, choosing to become Jewish this year, at this time. And of course, the word anti-Semitism was on everyone's lips. As we approached the new year this year, I remembered an article I read, not this summer, the summer before, that has been welling up in me, not only this year, but all 27 years of my rabbinate and even before. The article is entitled, Three Falsehoods About Anti-Semitism and One Truth that is by Brett Stevens in the journal that he edits called Sapir. Today, I am interested in his truth about what we can do in the face of anti-Semitism. I am less concerned about what he or we believe about the causes of anti-Semitism. Let's just agree it exists. And let's applaud every person and organization, school and government, that works to diminish anti-Semitism in the world. But that should not be our major focus. Our sacred work as Jews is to do Judaism, to strive to be holy, which actually means separate and different. Stephen says the real question isn't how to solve anti-Semitism, it's how to thrive in the face of it. The real antidote to anti-Semitism is Jewish thriving. Can we continue to build this thriving Jewish community here by each one of us building and leaning into our own Jewish actions? And can we commit ourselves to more joyful Jewish living, to see each day as an opportunity to do more meets vote, to bring about more good? Can I ask you, our most committed, to add one more mitzvah, one more Jewish action into your life each day and week in 5785? And if you don't know which mitzvah, come talk to me. We'll figure it out. I suspect that you may think I sound like a Chabad rabbi, but I assure you I am not. (laughs) Though I greatly honor their work of inviting each Jewish person to do more Jewish. Like them, I invite you this year to lean into your Judaism. Not only the universal parts, but the particular parts and to also see the good works that you already do as a manifestation of our Jewish values. And look, you already got a head start. You came back for day two. 
Doing mitzvot with joy is about living fully in this world, in our heads, but more importantly, in our hearts and our bodies. Joy is not happiness. It is about feeling whole, shalem, even when we feel a bit broken. I know this isn't logical. It's about feeling. It's not from your head. It's from our ancient and enduring system of reaching our hearts. When the Jewish people accept the Torah, they say the words, Na'asev nishma, we will do and then we will understand. Well, I did not grow up keeping kosher. I only understand its value by having tried it. Maybe you can try it. I did not grow up putting on a talit or tefillin, but now the power of wearing Torah and of being enwrapped in our tradition is pure joy. Maybe you didn't grow up with daily prayer, but let me tell you, it's amazing to pause each day for moments of gratitude and petition. Maybe you live in a family where many acts of loving kindness are performed. Let's see these actions as mitzvot, as our cultural heritage. Let's do these acts to connect ourselves to something larger, to our past, to our people, and to the Holy One. But don't just do mitzvot, do them with joy. In case you're wondering, joy can be expressed in so many ways, as evidenced by the more than eight ways to say joy in Hebrew. Gila, rina, ditza, simcha. Joy occupies the imagination of Jewish teachers in every generation. Take, for example, the great Rebbe Nachman of Bratislav, who lived at the turn of the 19th century, not a good time for the Jews, who was famous for saying, mitzvah gedola liot b'simcha tamid. It is a great mitzvah to be joyful at all times. Judaism asks us to not only do mitzvot, but to have simcha shal mitzvah, joy while doing mitzvot. So mumbling a prayer is doing the mitzvah, but dancing and pounding the tables and moving with joy when praying, that's doing the mitzvah with joy. Avi and I promise that our services will be about simcha shel mitzvah, the joy of doing mitzvahs. So what is joy? It is not unbridled happiness. It's something more distinct. Rabbi Alan Liu of Blessed Memory wrote in his book, this is real and you are completely unprepared, that when we speak of joy, we are not speaking of fun. Joy is a deep release of the soul and it includes death and pain. Joy is any feeling that is fully felt, any experience we give our whole being to. We are conditioned to choose pleasure and to reject pain. But the truth is, any moment of our life that we fully inhabit, any feeling fully felt, any immersion in the full depth of life can be the source of deep joy. Living in a framework of mitzvah, of Jewish actions filling our lives, of being in, will bring you deep joy. Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory helps us to understand this when he writes, we are here, we are alive, we are among others who share our sense of jubilation. And we do not know what tomorrow may bring. And yes, we are surrounded by enemies, and yes, it was never safe or the easy option to be a Jew. But when we focus on the moment, allowing ourselves to dance and sing and give thanks, we do things for their own sake and not for reward. When we let go of our separateness, then there is joy. We can survive the failures and the defeats if we never lose the capacity for joy. Joy is about wholeheartedness and being in it, even in times of sadness. That is why last year, so many of you came to make hummus to raise money for Israel and be part of our evening even though it was a terrible time. You experienced joy in helping and in being together. 
Our community thrives when we invest our days with Jewish actions. Halakha, the word for the observance of Jewish law, literally means the path. Our souls thrive when our path is to live with joy, with intention, and with Jewish actions. And diversity of those actions is what creates this rich and vibrant community. Thriving communities value multiple entry points. And each one of us will be called to a different kind of Jewish action. JTS former Chancellor Arnold Eisen calls that you find your, quote, signature mitzvah. So think about it. What could your signature new mitzvah be this year? What could you add that reflects who you are? Is it art, politics, study, cooking, ritual, social justice, all meets vote? We just have to see them that way. This new year, find the actions that will fill your heart and do them with intention and intensity and impassioned and with joy. Any age is the time to lean in to thriving Judaism. So let me tell you a few stories. Recently, last week, a young man in our congregation asked for tefillin for his 18th birthday, and he got them. Amen. Recently, some young bat mitzvah girls and their moms made their ovens kosher at home so they could bake challah for the whole community. Amen. An experienced teacher a few years ago took on the mitzvah of talit. Amen. That same experienced teacher decided to teach less Holocaust and more Jewish culture. Amen. A young woman in our community set up a business where the proceeds go to a charity. Amen. We ate her cookies Saturday night. Some of you make a minion. Some make connections with Israel. Some learn Israeli poetry. Some read Torah. Some pray each day at home or here. And some of you work to bring justice on behalf of the Jewish people to this world. And some of you fight anti-Semitism. This year, this day, 5785, what meets vote will you add to your life and to our community? We at TJC are about doing joyful, soulful Judaism. We want you to be part of it all year long. We want you to make your joyful mark here. Will you help us to visit more sick people this year? Would you help us by cooking for them? Right now, we send meals to any family who has a death in their family, but we cater them. Let's start cooking. Will you help people find friends and community here by inviting them to your home for a Shabbos meal or bringing them to sit with you? Could you add Torah study to your life, even if you've never done it or haven't done it since your bar bat mitzvah? How about adding Jewish culture and art? Take a Jewish art class here. We have them. Could you join us at our joy-filled Shabbat services or, as I say, JFK? Just for Kiddush. <laughs> Will you provide for those in need? through Jewish venues, like the Jewish Family and Children's Service, but through TJC. Here's a different one. Even if you do not keep kosher yet, yet, could you buy kosher meat so that the kosher establishments will stay in business for the rest of us? Will you help people sit shiva in this community by making a shiva call even and especially if you do not know the family, but they are members of TJC. Will you begin to learn Hebrew? Will you care for your body, the one that God gave you in a Jewish yoga or meditation class? Will you go to Israel? Yes, even now, especially now. Come meet with me or one of our teachers, and we can talk about what your mitzvot of the year could be. Doing new meets vote will add a spiritual connection to your life that will connect you to our past and bring all of us to our future. Let us see our days as opportunities to do one more mitzvah and to do so with simcha, with joy. 
Let us discern together all the myths, the opportunities, so that in times of darkness and in times of light, our Jewish actions, as Rachel said, Rachel Poland, Goldberg, can ground and anchor each one of us. In the face of anti-Semitism, let's make Judaism thrive. In the face of anti-Semitism, let's live our Judaism loud and proud. Join with us now as we loudly, proudly, and joyfully pray the Musaf service. Shana Tova.